This short video lecture introduces the catchment or drainage basin, a central unit within hydrology and its processes. The catchment or drainage basin is the geographical area that drains into a river or reservoir. This slide is to explain the positioning of the water table in easy terms. If you were able to dig a large pit, the level to which the water from the ground rises in that pit is called the water table. The water table is in between the unsaturated zone, soil water, with water and air in the soil pores, and the saturated zone, water in the pores or groundwater. A water table that can establish itself freely is by definition the level at which the pore water pressure in the ground equals the air pressure of the overlying air. This is a picture from my PhD days showing a block diagram of the digital elevation model of the Kriebsbach drainage basin in the Goodland of Luxembourg. You can see here the plateau made up of Luxembourg sandstone. Here is the Cuesta Rim. Here you're entering the Kuiper Mals. All the precipitation that falls on the area leaves the area at this location as surface water flow. So this is an example of a drainage basin or catchment. This picture shows two catchments in cross-section view. Catchment to the left and a catchment to the right. Usually the topographic boundary is the catchment boundary. But as you can see depicted here, there is a permeable layer in the subsurface. So rain falling on this area or water moving from upslope can enter this permeable layer and can discharge into your left catchment. Because of this, the catchment boundary is situated here rather than at the topographic boundary. Also, ideally, you would like the catchment to have a sealed surface at the bottom. Then there is no leakage of water out of the system. And then the only location for water to leave the system, to leave the catchment, is at the outlet points of the catchments. Here we have a generalized scheme of drainage basin processes. As input to a drainage basin, there is precipitation. And as output from the drainage basin, there is evaporation, leakage, and discharge. In small captions, we have the processes, the volumes of water per unit of time, and within the rectangles, in large captions, we have the storages, volumes of water over time, vegetation, land surface, soil water, ground water, and surface water. Here is precipitation. Precipitation is intercepted. The process is called interception. There is interception storage on the vegetation, on leaves and branches. From there, water can evaporate, a process called interception evaporation. Or water can drip from the leaves as through fall, or it can flow along the stem of trees as stem flow. The water accumulates at the land surface. This is called surface detention or depression storage. From there, water can evaporate, but it can also flow over the land surface towards the stream, overland flow. From the land surface, from the storage at the land surface, water can infiltrate into the subsurface, into the unsaturated zone or the soil water zone, a process called infiltration. It is stored as soil water, soil water can evaporate 
process called soil evaporation. But water can also flow through the soil matrix or bypass the soil matrix and contribute to the surface water flow in a stream, soil water flow. Water can move further downwards from the unsaturated zone into the saturated zone, so from your soil water storage to groundwater storage, a process called percolation. From the groundwater reservoir, there is a slow sustained water flow into the surface water system, groundwater flow. All these water flows, overland flow, soil water flow, and groundwater flow, deliver water to the streams and rivers, and thus become surface water storage. Surface water leaves the catchment at the catchment outlet. The process of water flowing through these streams and rivers is called discharge. Of course, surface water can evaporate, evaporation. Also, there is precipitation that directly falls into the streams and rivers. This is called channel precipitation. Finally, there may be the process of leakage if the catchment is not well sealed at the bottom. And this leakage water does not leave the catchment at the catchment outlet point.